guys and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to make something actually uh, you guys suggested. A few people suggested it under a video I made a couple of weeks ago. I'm not sure which one it is anymore but I put it on my list of things to do and it's finally time. Today we're going to make cargo pants and I am super excited because I've never really done anything specific in terms of pants. I made like mom jeans and stretchy jeans and stuff like that but I've never really made any functional pants in that sense you know like with a bunch of pockets and really cool stitching and oversized and lower hip or whatever baggy something like that and I'm really excited to make these pants with you guys. For these pants I decided to go for cord. Of course you can use any denim, any functional fabric, anything you like. There are so many options with this look. Of course you know the specific brown cargo pants that you probably are thinking of. I made a sketch so like brown and I also will be going with a brown fabric. I made this sketch right here and as you can see here this is going to be the fabric this brown cord. Cord is not the name it's corduroy in English actually so this brown corduroy fabric here is a very fine corduroy so I'm excited to use this very nice to touch and then this is my sketch for the pants. I want to have a dividing seam at around the knee. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to put zippers in but I don't think so. Then lots of pockets, big belt loops as you can see right here and then I was thinking about maybe adding some tunnel and elastics in the hem to make it like even more sporty. So that's what we're going for and I actually already made a mock-up which I already have on. I'm gonna show you what they look like. So this is what they look like. They are a tiny bit too long um, as of right now, but that's fine. They are um, in the middle of hip and waist. I think I'm gonna make them even more lower because I feel like also this is too long, just a tiny bit. So I'm thinking about removing about, let's say two centimeters here. I'm thinking about removing the yoke and just pulling this up because it just looks nicer, maybe not removing Moving it fully but at least taking out about two centimeters here and then maybe make a yoke that is a tiny bit bigger and not just this small thing right here. Um, obviously we're gonna make side pockets, we're gonna make big pockets right here, are they called paperback pockets? I'm not sure but like these big pockets that also have some sort of depth and then also here I guess on your legs and yeah really excited to do that. I think I'm even gonna make my pants a tiny bit wider um, because I feel like they can be a bit wider and make it here a tiny bit wider and lower and I think that's all of the changes that I'm thinking of doing so I'm going to experiment a tiny bit with the pockets because I'm not sure how to make them yet to make them 3d and stuff and I'm gonna show you all of my experiments and which version I ended up using in just a second and I'll be back with the finished pattern and the pockets. Hi sorry I quickly wanted to hop in here it's editing me. Um, I I'm nominated for an award, which is super exciting. I'm nominated for the Happiness is Handmade Award by Prim and Borda. So I will put the link down in the description below and you can go vote for me. I'm actually uh, nominated in two categories, in Design Magician and Knowledge Master. So you can just go ahead and click down the link in the description below and then select my name, this is Kachi, out of the drop down menu for the two topics that I just said. So thank you so much, that would be amazing if you could do that and help me out there. You can vote until June. There will be an event where I will be attending to in Cologne, Germany, where uh, the nomination ceremony will be and uh, so on and so forth. And I'm super excited for that. I can't wait. And yeah, thank you very much for your vote and we're gonna continue with the video. So before I'm gonna show you how I ended up making the uh, bellows pockets, I found out that they're called that. Um, I'm gonna show you where to put interfacing tape to the pattern pieces. So obviously you will find on the pattern pieces that have full-on interfacing, you, you're gonna find it written there. So obviously you're gonna do that to them. And then on top of that, we're gonna add interfacing tape to these pattern pieces, especially at the pocket seams and then also at the center back and center front. So basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna add interfacing tape to the pocket seams, to all the pocket seams, and then interfacing tape to the center front and the center back. So I will be using black interfacing tape right there. Um, you can get that in 
well, black or white. I think they're also in other colors. Not sure it doesn't really matter because we're going to sew over top that anyway, so just a tiny bit of this will be visible in the very end. This one is non-elastic, so you're gonna have to, you know, kind of stretch it um, and figure this curve out. If uh, it doesn't work at all, you might want to cut into the band and open it up a tiny bit and give it a bit more ease. That works usually. Okay, let's talk about pockets. I want to make Bellows pockets and Bellows pockets basically are these kind of pockets here that have depth to them and that kind of nicely fold down once they're not used. So this is what I want to create a 3D pocket on top of my pants. I want to make four of them. So two on each leg and it has this flap on top with a press button right here. So how I constructed this pocket is actually quite simple. If you have any knowledge of geometry, then this should be no problem to you at all. Basically, this is my, my pattern piece for the pocket and that's it. <laughs> so it only needs two seams right here. This needs to be sewn together and you just do that by folding this edge right here in a diagonal way. So you want to have these two lines meet and then just sew from this corner to the edge of the fabric. And you want to repeat that right here on the other side as well. So these are the two things that you need to sew for Bellows pockets. And once you have that, it creates this 3D shape. Basically like a paper box. If you ever made paper boxes when you were younger, maybe I did it a lot. So uh, this was quite easy to figure out. And then obviously once it's not used, you want it to fold neatly down. So what I did for that, just fold this four centimeter wide depth the the i don't know the sides basically of the pocket i folded it in half and made uh, it face towards the outside and that's basically it what it does to the corners if you have this piece right here fold towards the corners and you fold one side towards the outside and then also fold this side towards the outside it lays automatically in a diagonal way as well. It wants to lay nicely like this. And this is just with paper, so obviously the fabric is gonna lay way easier and gonna be, you know, handled in a way easier way. Um, so that's the basic. And then for the flap, we're just gonna have uh, the usual pattern piece that we're using for pocket flaps like this, which looks like this, and we're just gonna fold it in half that's not the pocket piece, but it's the same principle. <laughs> there we go. This is the pocket piece. As you can see, it's the same principle. You have it, you have interfacing on, you fold it like this. Obviously, you're gonna turn this inside out. You're gonna have this button here and it closes the pocket. So very easy, very easy geometry. And with fabric, it's e even easier than with paper. But that really helped me to figure out <laughs> my cat is in the background, like doing something, I don't know. Um, but the paper really helped me to figure out uh, what I wanted to do and what I needed to do. So if you ever come across a problem like this, where you don't really know how to make a pattern piece, I recommend to just do it in paper and see how it works because it's just easier to, you know, you can tape, tape it together. It just doesn't wiggle that much as fabric does. Really, really nice. And it helped me in this case very much. I only needed one pattern piece and I had it already figured out. So I can recommend paper. So now that that is out of the way, we can actually continue with the pants itself and we're gonna start as per usual with the pockets the pockets in the side front 
Okay, so we're going to start with the pockets in order to uh, make the fly piece or like make the fly in general, the opening in the center front. And we have two different pockets with um, pocket facings on top of them. So what we first want to do is actually overlock this seam right here because this will be just stitched on top of the pocket. So we want to have a nice edge there. Same goes to this pocket facing so we have the lower and the upper pocket facing that are you know going on top of the lower and the upper pocket so we want to overlock this seam and this seam right here now done with that we can continue to put the pocket facing onto the pockets respectively so this should just fit on top of the pocket like this and then you're just gonna top stitch it into the overlock seam and fix this into place on both of the pockets just like this and you're gonna do the same with the lower pocket as well. This should also just fit perfectly onto the pocket and you're gonna stitch it um, in the overlock seam, just top stitch it onto the pocket. Okay, we have the pockets prepared. And now what we're gonna do is basically just put right sides of the upper pocket, so the one that has this corner cut out, onto the pocket seam of the front pant. And it should also just align with the pattern piece like this. And you're just gonna sew right here and overlock it. And you're gonna do the same to the other side as well with the remaining pocket piece. Okay, we can iron this now the right way. So you're gonna fold the pockets onto the wrong side or before you do that, iron the seam, the pocket seam towards the front piece and then fold the pocket onto the wrong side of the front piece and make sure that the ditch of the seam right here is on the wrong side so that you're not gonna see it on the right side of the, of the pant and we're gonna iron that as well. So you could understitch this if you wanted to, but I'm gonna add a bunch of top stitching as just decoration and then also to make the pants more sturdy as they are functional pants. So I'm not gonna do any of that understitching for these pockets as of right now, but I'm going to add top stitches and I think I'm gonna to add two top stitches, one very closely to the edge and then another one that is just five millimeters next to it. So the, so the classic jean denim stitching that you know. I'm also gonna probably do that in a contrasting color. I was thinking maybe about a, an orange or red I have more of red, so probably that. And I hope that it's gonna look really, really nice. I'm gonna do that with my leather machine as well uh, because I've had some troubles with thicker thread and my normally industrial machine. So I'm gonna go for the leather machine ASAP and not worry about anything. So I stitched this, as I just said, I double stitched this, and now it's time to put the lower pocket onto this. So we're gonna put this down and then you're gonna find notches in the lower pocket that mark the opening of the pocket. And you're gonna find that these actually align at the stitching line. So one centimeter in, in my case. We're gonna flip this around and then just put the pocket itself together so that everything matches up nicely and it's time to stitch the pockets together. All around we're gonna overlock this and also stitch this with thinner thread and then we have the pockets ready. We're gonna do that for the other side as well obviously. So now that the pockets are done here at the side we can go ahead and make the front opening and I actually checked out a video of mine that I did quite a while ago uh, about my wide legged pants that you can go ahead and click up here in the eye and just go to this timestamp right here because I am already showing you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do the fly. It's always the same principle so you can go ahead and check that out. I'll be doing my fly or my opening here uh, off camera and I'll be back once the opening is 
finished. Okay, the front is done and we can continue with the legs as we have a dividing seam in the front legs at around the knee line. We're going to add the legs to it and make sure not to swap them around too much, which I just did, which wasn't smart. Um, so we're just gonna put the right sides together as per usual. So let me just open this up. So we're just gonna put right sides together as per usual. I'm going to stitch this, then overlock this, and then top stitch this uh, with a double top stitch like everywhere else. This is gonna be like my common theme, I guess and then we can continue with the back leg. Okay, so the front is basically done. I also went ahead and ironed the seam and I switched to my normal machine because my leather machine is just not for this thin type of fabric, it's for leather words. So it just doesn't work with uh, with it. And I got my other machine to work in a pretty good way. So if you have a uh, bobbin thread and upper thread in this thicker one, it should usually work. It sometimes has troubles, at least my machine has troubles with that sometimes, but it worked out now. So I'm quite happy with uh, that. And we can take the front part and put it aside and then continue working on the back legs. So for the back legs, we're gonna start with the back pocket. And first thing that we're gonna do is just overlock all around the pockets. To put them onto the back pant legs, it's the easiest to just prepare the folds, basically, so like iron everything down. Uh, we also want to add a decorative stitch, or not only a decorative stitch, it's also a functional stitch. So we wanna iron the top seam down and then also add top stitches, however you like, actually. Probably it's the best to just go with your design for the overall pants. So I'm also gonna do the double stitching all around these pockets as well. So I'm gonna add the double stitching to the top lines right here. And now I can go ahead and iron all of the seam allowances towards the inside of the pocket to prepare it for stitching down. So I'm just gonna do that to all of the sides really quickly. So just like this, and the pockets are symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which one you put to what side. And on my pattern, you're gonna find the placement for the back pocket. Obviously, that's just an example. You don't have to follow this. You can place it wherever you want because that's also something we got taught in university. Different shapes need different placements for pockets, different sizes, different angle, and so on and so forth. That's like a whole thing. Um, so if you're interested in that, I might wanna do a video for that, or you can also just Google it and see for yourself, maybe, you're gonna find the solution to the perfect pocket for your body shape. <laughs> Thought that was pretty interesting in university when we had that as a subject. And yes, yeah, so I'm just gonna transfer the placement here because that's what I quite like on myself actually to the back pant. And take one of the pockets and put it somewhat there. So like this, and then I'm also gonna do a double stitching all around the pocket. Okay, time to put the center back together. We're gonna put both, uh, we're gonna put right sides two together and then close this seam right here and also overlock it. And we're gonna iron this seam to either of the two sides. This is what it looks like. Before we are going to add top stitches here, we have to make the yoke because we're gonna put it right here and the top stitching will also continue down into the yoke. So we're gonna put right sides together and close the center back seam right here and also overlock it and iron it to the same side as with your back pant legs. And now we can put 
right sides together here and as you can see it's like this corner which we have to you so nicely so i'm just gonna put uh, the seam edge to edge right here until i reach the middle i'm going to add one pin at the stitching line right here so this pin is like one centimeter in from all directions and i'm going to do the same thing for the pant so now i know that these two have to match up right here and i can then twist it to the side and then also continue down the side and then i can sew the yoke onto the pants So as you can see here, I made it match up pretty nicely and uh, I'm going to iron the seam allowance up because I want to top stitch the yoke part right here. So wherever you add top stitches, that's basically where you put your seam allowance towards. So I'm just going to give it a quick iron and then we can put top stitches on this seam right here and then do one long row of top stitches over yoke and back pant legs. So to make it the easiest in putting it together, the front and the back piece, we're going to overlock the side seams separately on both the front and the back piece. Okay, now that the side seams are overlocked, we can put the side seam together. So just put right sides of front and back pieces together. You're gonna find some notches that you're just gonna match up. So side seam like this, then there will be a knee notch that you should match up as well. And then also down here in the outer side seam, you're gonna find a bunch of notches because I wanted to put a slit into the side seam as well. So I'm going to put a pin right where the notch is. So when I sew down, I'm gonna back tack here and then I'm gonna cut my thread and sew another time down here as a basting stitch because I'm gonna show you a really easy way of how to make this look really neat and tidy. So that's what I'm gonna do only on one side. So any of the sides is okay. Just only do it on one side, just close one uh, outer leg seam because it's the easiest if you have your piece lay flat for putting the pockets on. So at least for one side we can use that. Um, and that's why we're only gonna close one side seam for now. We're going to iron the seam open. Or at least we're gonna iron it until the notch open. I'm going to cut into the seam allowance right at the notch, right towards the stitching line, so that I have a twisting point here. I can have this be ironed open and the rest of the seam allowance be facing the back piece because we're gonna add top stitches in just a second again that I want to face the back piece. And right here at the hip curve, you wanna use some sort of round surface. So the tailor's ham, for example, that I made in a video would be a good option for that. This right here. You can just put it underneath and then you have a curved surface and it helps you to iron curved surfaces. And it's a really, really helpful tool. And before I'm gonna add any top stitches to the side seam. I'm going to show you how to make the slit really nicely. So this part right here. So for the slit, you're gonna need some sort of um, pre-finished band. Mine is one centimeter thick and it just has my name on it. Um, so I'm just gonna use that. I'm gonna put uh, face down, so right sides together. And I'm gonna put this one right on top of where the notch is, so just above it. So you can see the notch is right here and I'm gonna put it just above it. And then I'm gonna add a vertical bar tag right here into the stitching line that I previously did. So right here, I'm just gonna cut off enough for my, for my slit. I'm actually gonna give it a tiny bit more satin band like this, and it's gonna end up being folded down. So I'm gonna put a bar tag there. And now I can fold this piece down just next to the seam that I stitch close. Just like this. And you can see that it makes this triangle shape on top. And now I'm gonna add top stitches pretty closely to the edge and then also to the outside and stitch around this shape up here. 
and that's gonna make a really really nice slit in the end. As you can see the seam allowance completely is hidden behind the satin band and for the bottom we don't have to do anything actually because we are going to you know make a special hem as well. So we're just gonna top stitch this very closely to the edge. So this is what it looks like and then we can open the basting stitch up. And we have a perfect slit with you know, whatever you want to put on the inside. You can also go for some sort of pattern or whatever you want. And now that the slit is done, we can go ahead and put the top stitches also onto this side seam right here. Uh, and we're gonna do that towards the back of your pant leg because that's where we ironed the seam allowance too. Okay, let's add the bellows pockets. So these are the bellows pockets and you're gonna find all of these fold lines right here which I suggest to also put notches in because it's just way easier. So what you want to do basically, as I already explained it on my paper pattern, you want to fold these two sides so that the notch that you put in, so where these lines are drawn on, match up. And then you're gonna add a stitching line right down here in a 90 degree angle. You're gonna do that for one side and then you're gonna do that for the other side as well. So the side down here. And you have four of these pieces. So we're gonna do all four of them at once. Oh, and also before you do all of these, uh, overlock the pieces everywhere, all around. So the upper edge up here, we're just gonna fold down and then also top stitch just as we did with the previous stitching lines or like the previous seams we're gonna do that to all four of them and then we're gonna do these corners down here as i showed before So if we fold it this way now, so that it lines up with the end of your stitching and give this a press, do the same to the other side and then also to the bottom. We can then fold it outwards with one centimeter seam allowance still so we're gonna fold it there. So the depth of the fold is gonna be two centimeters. Therefore, we're gonna fold it outwards three centimeters and give this an iron and then do the same to the other two sides. And you should find that it's gonna fold nicely in like a triangular way, as you can see right here. So this is what it should end up looking like. And we're gonna do the same to the other side. And this is how we're gonna fold our pockets. So as you can see, it has the seam allowance all around and the paper bag folds like this. And that's what we're gonna do to all of the pockets before putting them onto our pants. I went ahead and pulled up my uh, bellows pocket flap. Uh, which we also need four of for each pocket. Obviously, we're gonna make a flap for it. It's pretty easy to just make this. You're just gonna fold right sides together and close the sides right here. And then we're gonna turn it right sides out again to continue with top stitching and the press button and so on. So let's do that.
I also overlocked the upper edge right here because this will be visible in the end, kind of. We're going to fold it like this and then, you know, if you open the flap to go into the pocket, you're going to see that edge. So I overlocked this. Now it's time to put the press buttons in. I'm going to use gold ones that are around one uh, centimeter wide. I suggest to follow the directions of your specific press buttons just because they all kind of work a bit differently. So better be safe than sorry and read the ones you have. I drew in a line one and a half centimeters lower than the fold line just to make it easier for me to add the placement of the press button onto my pocket. So now I can just align the upper edge like this with the blue line and then have this hole, um, you know, be uh, the center and put a needle down there. And now I can add, you know, a set of press buttons onto these two points. And this is what it's gonna look like in the very end. So very nicely, I'm really happy with that. And now we can continue and put these actually onto the pants. So it's something that we've been working on for a long time now. So let's do that. We're gonna put the pockets onto the side seam that is already closed. And I drew in an example of the pocket placement into the pant leg of the front. That's what I'm gonna use. So right here you can see where I'm going to place the pocket. You can't really see it, but I can see through this paper. Kinda, sorta. I really can't. <laughs> I'm just gonna fold it where the pocket starts. So until here. And basically that's already everything that I need for the pocket because I'm going to align it to be parallel to here and then just have it end here in the pin. So to do this, I'm going to draw on the shape of this pocket onto my pants. And I'm gonna do that by, as I said before, going parallel to my side seam. So I'm gonna start from this corner right here and then go to the left. Like this, I'm just gonna go as far as I need to. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna measure here. This is 14 centimeters, so until here. And then I'm gonna go up 16 centimeters, trying to be as parallel as I can here, because this is a curved seam. This won't be perfectly parallel, but that's fine. Like this, do the same on this side here. And then we can go ahead and put the pocket there. So what I want to do with the pocket is have this seam also face towards the inside and that way nothing of the seam will be visible in the end. So what I'm gonna do is basically put this seam right here with the seam of the corner that we did in the very beginning match up with the corner of the pocket placement. So underneath where I just put the pin right there is the pocket corner. So we're gonna align that with our stitching line of the pocket itself. So that way I'm making sure to first of all stitch on the stitching line and then second of all also have a nice corner there and there because we're gonna stitch down here then turn the pocket stitch down here do the same over this corner right there and then go back up that way all of the seam allowances will be hidden on the inside and it's gonna look neat and tidy from the outside and since these pockets are big enough you can easily do that basically on the inside you're gonna see that while sewing and it should be no problem if you have any problems with that you can always iron the seam allowance also towards the inside and then top stitch really closely to the fold right there you're gonna end up having more or less the same result just with a visible top stitching which is not really a problem as we have so many visible top stitches on this pant on these pants anyways already but i will show you this right here and maybe on my Insta, I'm gonna show you the other technique that I was just saying. If you haven't already, you should go follow my Insta for that and so many other tips and tricks that I'm showing you in my reels. So let's sew this. Okay, so the pocket is on. As you can see, it looks really nice. And I also pressed it down again so that the shape of the pocket stays. And now I'm just gonna put the push button there and fold this one centimeter inwards, something like that. And if I open this, it's gonna tell me where to put my flap. So I'm gonna put this right here. The edge of my flap is just a few millimeters higher than the edge of my pocket, which is how I anticipated. So that's nice that I that, that it works out. So 
I'm gonna put it back down just to see again and it seems to be working fine. So we're gonna be able to sew this on right here. And I am also gonna add a top stitch up here just so that it falls downwards where it's supposed to be. And the same way as this pocket, I'm going at to attach the other pocket just below the knee line. You're gonna find the placement also on the lower leg, front leg pattern piece, which is what I'm just going to copy onto my pattern piece. So I also added the pockets to the other side. I just mirrored the placement from, you know, the left side that I already did. I also went ahead and did the lower pockets already. So now the pants are finally ready to be put together. So we're going to close the side seam that is still open. And also remember that there is a slit in the hem. So we're gonna do exactly the same that we did for the other side seam. And I'll be back once I'm done with that. So as you can see, looks pretty much the same. I just did exactly the same steps as for the first slit that I made. Now we can flip everything wrong sides out to close the inner leg seam. So we're just gonna put center front and center back together like this and then also align the notches and the hem and just close the seam all the way to the other hem of the leg and also overlock this. So I'm gonna put my hands onto my sleeve board right here to iron it. I'm also, I'm going to iron everything towards the back and I'm not gonna top stitch because this was quite a hassle already. So I'm just gonna iron this. And before we turn this over, I'm gonna overlock the hem because I will be flipping the hem up uh, one centimeter inwards and then also two centimeters up to form a tunnel, which we can then use for this to, to put an elastic in. So actually, before we do that, we want to add eyelets on both of these sides of the slit. There will be a placement for the eyelets in the pattern that you can get at the link down below and also in the pinned comment if you're interested in this pattern. I will be putting my eyelet here in the middle, um, one centimeter from my stitching and um, away from the stitching and I'm gonna mirror that placement onto the other side right here. And then I'm gonna do that for the other leg as well and put eyelets in. So instead of overlocking, I thought it would be best to just fold the hem one centimeter inwards and then two centimeters upwards. So the hem facing that is already in the pattern, just with the seam allowance being folded towards the inside. And I'm just gonna pin this in place and then top stitch it also to close the tunnel basically. And for my fabric, it's quite nice. So when I iron this tunnel down, you can kind of see where the fold is here. So for me, it's easy to top stitch um, from the right side then, which I want to do because of the problems I have with my thread. But basically, I'm just gonna pin this in place and then top stitch it. I cut down some elastics that just measure the width of the hem plus a tiny bit more. So if I fold them in half, you can see it's just a tiny bit more here because now we can go ahead and feed this through the hem with a safety pin, if I have one here, like this. And I can just go in through here. I left this open, which by the way, you can leave open because we're gonna pull it through the eyelet and then add a stopper. Similar to when I made my jacket and my raincoat, I also used this technique. It's the most commonly used technique, the only technique. I don't even know another one. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do here as well. Thank you. 
So the last step for my pants um, is the waistband and I am going to iron the seam allowance of one of the waistbands up to prepare for sewing later. Now I can put right sides together and I'm going to stitch the waistband together but make sure to only start stitching at the fold that you just ironed in. So you just want to start stitching right here and go all around it and then also stop stitching on the other side in the fold line right there. I'm gonna cut away the edges right here just because it's easier to turn everything over and then I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to use my scissors to pop the edges out. You can use any tool that is just pointy as you can see the difference right here. And then I'm going to iron my waistband. So the folded side right here is going to end up being the outer side. So I'm going to iron the seam up here in such a way that it's not visible from the outside. And for me personally, it's the easiest if I have it laying on the right side of the fabric. Okay, so my waistband is prepared now. I'm going to then take my pants. I already put my belt loops in the respective space. You will find notches there. And now I can put the non-iron side onto the wrong side of your pants and just pin it in place. And then just go all around and match up the notches with the respective uh, positions. So I think side seam center back and then also center front where the fly piece is here, the four centimeters. So you want to match up all of these. And you can now sew the waistband onto the pants. And now once I flip this up, I can flip the pre-iron side of my waistband just on top of the seam that I just stitched. Pin this in place and then go all around the waistband again. And now I will go around here, stitching or doing my double top stitch as I did with these pants. And then we can attach the belt loops, add the closure here in the front, and then the pants are done. This is what it looks like and the last step is to just put the belt loops up and under. So I'm like folding it under and then folding it up and then I'm gonna add a bar tag to the top right here probably with my leather machine because this is getting quite thick. Not gonna film this, but I'm just gonna add a bar tag closely to the upper edge right there to all of the belt loops. So the last step is to put a closure right here. I'm just also gonna use a push button and I'm gonna put it right here in the middle of basically this and this. So two centimeters away from all sides. And as per usual, just follow the instructions on the pieces that you are using and I'll be ready or I'll be back once I'm done. 
And that's it already for today's video. I am super, super excited to show you this project, Worn. So if you haven't already, go ahead and click the subscribe button down below and check out all of my other videos. I made plenty of videos about pants already. I also have so many videos on dresses, coats, jackets, anything design, sewing, uh, pattern making related that you can think of. If you have any suggestions, make sure to pop them down in the comments below. Also ring the bell so you'll get notified every time that I upload. I upload on Sundays so you can keep an eye out for that. And in the meantime, you can check out my Instagram. I am sharing lots of tips and tricks um, on my Instagram and my reels. So if you're interested in that, go check out the links down in the description below. The handle is the same as here on my YouTube so you can also easily find me there. And yeah, that's everything already. I hope you enjoyed today's video. It was a very long video again, but the outcome is really worth it. So thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you next Sunday. Bye guys!